Hello, uh, this is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Tuesday, December the 1st. I am Michael Bean, uh, a host of the My Free Acting Class project. So you've been teaching, oh gosh, you know, at least three days a week uh, for eight months now. Uh, and uh, we've got this week and next week, and then we're going to take a couple of weeks break. I'm going to be thinking about sort of how to revise uh, this project and sort of what the next phase of it looks like. So if you have ideas and you like watching these videos, then please email me info at myfreeactingclass.com with all of your good ideas. Today, I want to uh, look at a short script. Uh, so. We haven't done this for a while, but it is one of these scripts, uh, audition scripts, where there's challenging physical behavior and a story that is difficult to tell. Uh, and so we already recruited a volunteer before we started uh, recording and uh, Duke is going to help out with that today. So uh, let's take a look at the script. This is from a TV movie uh, or movie of the week. You know, called uh, Killer Mountain, um, 2010. This might have been a Tiffany Mac project. Uh, the uh, we're looking at a character. Uh, a what is his name? Ward, you know, who is the climbing instructor of uh, one of the lead characters, who I think is a teen boy. I'll read the stage direction, and uh, I will also be reading David, and then Duke will be reading Ward. So Duke, I'm just gonna pull it up on the screen here for everybody, and you can unmute yourself. You let me know when you're ready to go. Here we are. So exterior rock face day. Pouring rain, a male hand reaches up for a handhold. We see lifting himself up Ward Donovan, 30s, rugged good looks and thoughtful eyes. Sweat pours off his face. Super, uh, so this is superimposed with the text that goes over top. Colorado, present day. Uh, Ward is on belay. Below a hand grasps a belay line tight. It's a boy, David, 12, standing on the ground, anchored to the rock. He's nervous. Ward takes a deep breath and continues his ascent. The rope is going slack. He's not secure. Now, if you were somebody who didn't have any rock climbing experience, you could very, let, let's say that you were uh, reading either David or Ward and you didn't know anything about rock climbing, YouTube is a wonderful thing and will basically give you everything that you need to know you know, within the space of about three minutes. You know, between that and Wikipedia, all you would have to do is go and enter, what does it mean on belay? Uh, and then go watch you know, the tiniest little tip on YouTube. So you'd be like, oh yeah, it's like that. Uh, particularly when you're being asked to do physical action, they really are only gonna see what's in the frame. Yeah, and so you definitely don't have to be an expert rock climber in the same way that you don't have to be an expert ballerina to do ballet on camera. Because honestly, if you're ever doing a scene where you're asked to do ballet, they're only gonna see this much. And so as long as you're upper arm looks like it knows what it's doing. It's really all about commitment. They're not going to see the details that would wait, that would tell them, wait a second, this Michael Bean guy, he doesn't know about ballet. Uh, going back to look at the script. Uh, anchored to the rock, he's nervous. Ward takes deep breath and continues descent. The rope is going slack. He's not secure. Remember, remove the slack from pulling it in the and the excess rope. David nods. He tries to remove the slack from the line, but the rope is wet and it slips through his hands. Sorry. He tries again. We see the rope passes through the, a belay device attached to, the, to his harness. Turning back to the mountain, the ward takes a deep breath. He uh, uh, climbs up further, clipping his rope in a metal loop higher on the rock face. His foot slips as he lifts himself up. He pauses, staring down at the, sediment at, it, uh, at the sediment as it falls. Damn, that was close. Suddenly a helicopter passes overhead. Surprised by the interruption, Ward loses his grip. He starts to fall. David's supposed to lock the belay device, but he's distracted. He can't get a grip. The rope slips through his hands. Ward plunges down, rapidly falling. His weight pulls on the rope. David! David is nearly pulled off his feet. His own anchor is pulled tight. Finally, Ward manages to break using a munter hitch, stopping the rope with his carabiner. He stops. 
wider angle. Ward is only a few feet off the ground. This whole exercise was just a lesson. David turns red with embarrassment. Ward dangles awkwardly on the rope or on the cliff face, you know, whatever it is that they've sort of cut off here. So in order to realize you know, what the writer has given you, you know, if you are Ward, you know, then you're climbing, right? And you know, we've, there's really just these two lines. We're like, remember, pull in, uh, remove the slack by pulling in the excess rope, you know, and David, you know, anything else is going to be sound, ad lib. You know, so most of it is action. You know, so uh, if we look at this, you know, we've got you know, Ward Donovan. Uh, remember that if we see the character's name in all caps, uh, then that's the first time the character is being seen. Right? So that means the it's the first time the character's appeared in the script so far. Let's check what, let's see if we can see what page this is. Page four, right? So it's right at the beginning of the script. Uh -huh. And so we're, uh, we're seeing Ward for the first time. You know, now, if you're Ward and these are your audition sides, you know, what they've given you is uh, the challenge to like bring the stakes, you know, to sort of bring the sense of danger to it. Uh, even though, you know, then, then the reveal obviously is that like he's just a couple of feet off the ground. So you probably want to uh, add to the instructor, then ad lib something at the very end to help it make sense, you know, or right, like, a, you know, it's okay, or let's try again, you know, two or three words maximum if you're going for an ad lib, but you wouldn't want to add, you know, given how little dialogue you have is, don't worry about it, David, you know, just reset this something, something, I'm gonna use seven technical terms, you know, and then we'll try again. like, you wouldn't want to give yourself more dialogue than they've given you, uh, which sometimes happens with ad libs. You know, so what I want to use uh, Duke to demonstrate is how do you tell a story where you're supposed to be climbing on a rope and uh, or cl you know, climbing on a cliff face and then falling uh, when you've only got the frame? You know, so let's see if we can get that set up you know, and do some experimenting. You know, so we're going to spotlight you, Duke. Yeah, you know, and so can you readjust your camera so that you're uh, standing? It'll be a lot easier to tell the story of, of climbing if we've got you've got your body to move. I think. I will come back here. Uh, and so while uh, Duke is getting himself set up, I'm going to go through the sort of three basic things. And these this came up a lot in uh, in previous lessons. Um, Duke, if it's possible to, I know that it's not the most flattering angle, but if it's possible to move the camera a little bit closer, uh, because particularly for something like this, using the edges of the frame uh, to sort of cut off, you know, what your hands are doing uh, is going to help you tell the story in a big way. Uh, and like so when close. you're, yeah, yeah, it's just as, as close to the medium close up as you can get it set up you know, um, whatever is sort of works with your setup. Yeah, so Duke's being super game. For those of you who are at home, I'm not gonna give him a hard time about his camera angle, you know, because we didn't know what was happening today. He's just jumping in and helping us. Uh, the, when you get physical action, you know, my advice is that the first thing you do is you try it exactly like it's written. Yeah, you know, and then often what you'll find is you watch that back, you, right, you look at it, you record it on your phone, you know, just as you're kind of setting up and you're like, nah, it looks weird. You know, and so then you adjust it so that it's all outside of the frame. And that's sort of your second option. You try that. And then if that doesn't work, then you can make adjustments to it that still tell the story, but are a little bit different, right? So and then instead of you know, digging in your handbag, you're going to pull something out of your pocket. You know, the right then instead of slamming a door, uh, you know, you're gonna, um, I don't know, clap your hands, you're gonna make a loud sound, right? Instead of slamming the door to get people's attention, you're gonna be like, hey, you know, and then it goes, like, whoa, um, right? So there's still like physical action uh, that tells the story, um, but you're adjusting it. And I think what I see actors do a lot with taped auditions and in class both. Uh, because I, I teach classes regularly for uh, both adults you know, and for teens on camera classes, uh, is I see them uh, read that stage direction and then just not do anything with it. Be like, well, I didn't know how to tell that story. I didn't know what to do, so I just ignored it. And I would say that's the least effective way to tell that story is if you simply ignore the stage direction. So if we sort of uh, use Duke as our guinea pig and we go through uh, that, um, again, right, you've got 
it doesn't matter if you get the the line you know even close to right it's something the, the his line is remember remove the slack from remove the slack by pulling in the excess rope you know but really it's just like anything that's kind of like that you know is fine because mostly our focus is on the physical action right so if we start you know by doing it exactly like it uh, says you know you are climbing the rock you know the right so you put the rock there in front of you and part and partly this demo is so that they can see how silly it is like i know that you would exactly right you're climbing the rock you know uh stem uh stem uh and right you take a deep breath you're you know, right the rope's going slack you notice you know, uh, you look down at David and you tell him to keep the slack out. Remember, keep in the slack by pulling in the excess rope. Okay, and you, you're trying to climb up. Yeah, you know, and then your foot slips and you watch the sediment go down. You're like, ooh, that's far. You know, then a helicopter passes overhead. You know, uh, and you slip and start falling. You know, and this is where we kind of go... <laughs> Exactly. Right. And so boom, like if he's just doing exactly what it says, he's just going to clear frame. That's what's going to happen you know, because he's supposed to fall and David can't catch him. And you know, all of this is happening at once. And then he catches himself. So that's what it looks like if he's doing exactly what it says. You know, now let's clean up the eye lines. You know, and so um, uh, Duke, let's move you a little bit closer to camera. You know, and, uh, and, all, and all the rocks that you're grabbing, uh, let's put them outside of the frame you know, so that nobody can see that your hands are empty, right? So pick one side of the frame and I would say like, you know, get one handhold that's like up high. Um, but if you can, yeah, see, great. Actually, no, I think your first impulse is, is good from in the frame that you're in currently, they should both be in front of you rather than being up high. Um, because when you reach up high, I could see your empty hand. So put both handholds on one side of the camera. Yeah, awesome. perfect. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and uh, and then make David just the other side of the lens, right? So uh, so the eyeline for David, uh, yeah, and exactly, you're going to cheat him up a little bit, even though that doesn't act so sort of strictly speaking make sense. You're not all the way up, but like, but just so I can see your eyes still, yeah, yeah, something like that. You know, uh, and so from there, we're just going to do the same thing, but we're going to keep all the action, you know, outside of the frame. You know, so uh, you're climbing, you know, you kind of exactly looking for a handhold and remember don't reach up because we want to keep all the action outside of the frame so it's it's uh, so you what's your especially because we don't actually like we don't want you to end up standing on your toes you're, you're going to imagine that like it's just very small shifts on the rock like you're just sort of moving like a couple of centimeters this way and a couple of centimeters that way you know, looking for the right spot so like a real tricky spot on the cliff. you know stand by you know and starts you're trying to get find a place and you feel the rope going slack and remember, get that hand out of sight of the frame. So reach forward just a little bit more. There you go. And remember, pull in the extra slack by taking in the tension. Okay, and then you climb and your foot slips. Whoa, that was close. You look down, right? Oof. And then uh, you start climbing up again. You know, and then the helicopter passes. And remember, reach forward, not up. You know, if helicopter passes by, you lose your balance. Boom, you fall. And then. Uh, now we're going to uh, do the sort of third phase, you know, which is adjusting the action so that it all fits in the frame. Now, Duke, thank you so much for uh, you know, being our volunteer today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. you know, and so that same idea of like, you know, keep your hands outside the frame. Because if you look at me, you know, what I'm seeing you know, is if you reach up, I see the, at the empty claw hand. You know, Exactly. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So you start to kind of learn where the edges of your frame are, you know, and, and now the, the foot slip. You know, so we're, um, I want you to imagine if anybody was watching the tape, the, the uh, Duke had a sort of proper time to set up. And so he, we were seeing him in a medium close up, right? So just the top of his chest really liked armpits to the top of his head. So, because really we don't care as much about his arms, although they're nice, what we care about is his eyeballs and like how he's feeling. And so the closer the camera gets you know, to uh, the eyes, the, the better that's gonna be. The, uh, and so with that sort of imagining, you know, that, yeah, great, you know, and, and if you can take a step physically close to your camera without bumping the equipment, you know, then perfect, perfect. Yeah, so we're seeing um, you in more detail, which I think is, is really good. And so, and now that we're in that medium close up, the slip, like when your foot slips, it's really just gonna have to be a centimeter or two. 
right? So it, you, cause you want to make sure you don't dip out of frame as though you just take one foot and then slide it back behind you along the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just that little, so there's still, you're giving yourself a physical thing of sliding the foot on the ground and you're not having to worry about like how low am I going to dip, you know, but you're not actually sort of falling very far. Um, and then when we get to the action at the end of it, you know, where, you know, the helicopter startles you and you're gonna to start to fall. What's gonna happen is I want you to take one hand off as though you lose grip with one hand. Right? So instead of sliding through the rope, you're gonna lose grip with one hand and just really try and hold on with that other hand, you know, and and you know, fumble for the rope, you know, while the hand is hanging on, but you're not gonna dip out of frame. Like we don't actually want this because we want you you to sort of be there in the whole thing and then end up sort of like dangling on the rope and looking over at David and get that whole time for the moment after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and I think that the rope's really gonna be like, you know, at your belt, you know, or yeah, or, or you could, or it could be up there. Yeah, that's really nice. Right, and so there's that, so you're hanging on the wall, you see the helicopter, you know, like one hand comes off, you're like, whoa, right? You know, one hand comes off, you're good. And then you're fumbling and, and you say, David, David, and then the, uh, and then, oh, you catch yourself. Oh, phew. You know, and then you look over at him and you see that he's really freaked out, you know, and then you put in your ad lib of like, you know, it's okay, or let's try again, or so sort of, because you're the instructor. Yeah. It's okay, that's the way it's supposed to work. Exactly. Sure. Good. And and so what, what Duke uh, did just there, you know, is is very, very normal. Uh you know, the and which is he uh, but it, uh, but I would say that it's that thing of the ad lib is about as much dialogue as the writer has given the character. You know, and so if you're putting in an ad lib, it's, it's just a good idea to make it very short. You know, um, most of the time the writer's not watching, it's not a big deal, you know, but just in case, you know, some, unless you have the opportunity to talk to casting or to other actors who've gone out for the show to sort of find out how they feel about ad libs. Oh, I'm just remembering a story about uh, Killer Mountain and I'll have to tell you after this. You know, so uh, let's, uh, let's take that from the top, you know, and just sort of uh, run it, you know, and it's short enough that we could run it a couple of times uh, so that you all can see sort of how this would look if Duke was auditioning for it. Uh, stand by and action, right? Competent instructor doing a serious thing. You remind the kid to take the slack out of the line. Remember, pull in the slack to keep it a little bit tense. This foot slips. Whoa. All right, good, but we're still seeing his face really clearly, really nice. The helicopter, oh, damn, he's going to fall. He's going to fall. He shouts for the kid. David! And then he catches himself. Okay. And then he just looks at the kid who's like super freaked out and nervous. Yeah. And now No, no, it's okay. Yeah, it worked. Perfect. Exactly. And that's the whole thing cut. You know, and, and so he, what he's given us is instead of two lines, he's given us an entire story. You know, uh, thank you so much, Duke. Really, really appreciate it. Right? He's given us an entire story and physicality. You know, and we were seeing the, the character, not just through the lines, but through the way that he is handing, handling the physical behavior. Now, something Duke said before we started this lesson uh, is that he has experience climbing. So that's, that's really an asset with something like this because you know, we're, we didn't have to sort of talk him through the self-consciousness of like, well, my hands are here and I know you guys believe I'm climbing, but I feel weird about it because I've never done this before. You know, so that, that wasn't in play here and that made it a little bit easier. You know, what I will often see with actors in class is that it really it sometimes takes recording them and showing it back you know, to get them over the like, but I'm not a climber, this is weird. You know, and so very often, if you are having that feeling, one of the best ways to work through it is just record it. You know, record it and play it back for yourself. And then once you can see that, oh, it's actually just my shoulders that people are seeing in detail. Oh yeah, okay. Like this is an acting exercise. It's, it's, I don't have to be an amazing climber or an amazing boxer or an amazing ballet dancer or whatever it is that they've asked you to do uh, for the physical action in a script. Uh, the, uh, the last thing uh, that I wanted to say uh, is that uh, Killer Mountain, I remember actually, uh, because at the time Tiffany Mack was coming in to uh, teach workshops in my summer intensives, uh, 
just about every week through the summertime, you know, or there were, like there were several summers when you were like, I'd have her come in every week you know, for the summer intensive group. Uh, and she talked about how the director for this, and just a, that reminder of the sort of actor's food chain for anybody at home who is, um, for whom the reminder is useful, is you've got the producer at the top, maybe there's usually multiple producers, they're in charge of the money, so they make the final decisions, including decisions about who gets cast. This is the director, director's in charge of the story. There's the casting director, they're in charge of the auditions, so they're basically the gatekeeper. They decide who gets an audition, but they do not decide who gets cast. Uh, then there's the talent agents you know, who are the, sort of are the mediator between the casting director and the actors. You know, so uh, talent agents are basically marketing folks in charge of helping actors get auditions and then taking commission when they book work. And then the actors down here who are in charge of themselves, me, uh, and all their marketing materials and that kind of thing. Uh, and one of the stories that she told about this project is that they were down to two different, uh, I think it was uh, actresses for the lead. Uh, and the director just left the camera rolling for a full minute after her, their scene was done as a way of just seeing if they would stay in character and what that would be like. Uh, and so right, you can imagine you know, this like you near know, callback or maybe there was even a second round of callback. So it's really down to just like a few actresses and you know, each one going in would then sort of do this dramatic and charged scene. You know, and then the cast director would not call cut or the director would not call cut you know, not, with no warning and it was because he wanted to see, uh, or at least this is the way the story was told, was that the director just wanted to see who would sort of be creative and be in the story until after they called cut. And this was meaningful for his decision making. Now, I don't remember uh, whether or not, in my memory, he ended up casting the actress who stayed in, uh, in character. Well, I think we'd have to ask Tiffany the next time she comes in as a guest here on this lesson, uh, if that's accurate or not. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, again, the quick rundown, you know, and this is the caveat is set up a camera so that you can record yourself because some of it might feel weird, but doesn't mean it's gonna look weird. When you get strange physical behavior on camera uh, as part of your audition in the, the stage direction, uh, then try it exactly like it's written. You know, you know, probably something will be funky about that. You know, keep it all, uh, all, all of your, uh, the physical action, uh, outside of the frame, so do it, you know, but just keep uh, anything you have to touch or come into contact with that's going to sort of give away that you're miming, keep it outside the frame, you know, and then any part of that that doesn't work, you adjust the action to something that still tells the story. It's an important caveat, uh, but, uh, but you're making changes to it, you know, to have something that fits. You know, and then, of course, if none of that works, like if really the physical action is like, he runs down a flight of stairs, okay, you know, cut that, it's fine. Um, you know, but that's, that's a different sort of conscious choice. And, and with something like that, you might even be like, well, he runs enough flight of stairs, so I'm going to take two steps so that they can see that I want to run away. Yeah, Duke, did you have a question? I had an audition once where half of my lines were while I was standing, and then I stooped down and got on all fours and do the other half of my lines. I actually did a two cameras. I did it in two scenes, basically. Ah, uh, uh, right. Is that... Yeah. Is that unheard of? What did I faux pas? Or, <laughs> or, uh, I, I think it's a, a great creative solution. You know, the for something like that, if the if casting is giving you strange scenes and sort of mashing them together, you know, often it, I look for myself and with my clients for creative solutions for how to cover those transitions. And so that's as good as any. You know, like if we're if we're going to follow that same kind of basic logic of like, okay. What if I've only got one camera or if I want to do a continuous take, you know, so that um, just because I feel like that's a necessary convention, you know, then I try the scene, okay, standing all fours. Well, that doesn't def definitely doesn't work with one camera because I'm gonna have to reach out and adjust my iPhone halfway through. That's gonna not look good. Um, and so then like, well, okay, adjust it all out of frame, you know, um, what if what happens if I put a desk or a chair here in front of me, you know, and uh, like, and I just lean forward and put my hands on the desk, you know, and do that for my all fours. Does that tell the story enough? You know, and then Duke's solution of just going, well, no, that's important to tell the story. So I just did it in two shots, you know, as separate scenes. 
you know, right? That's another creative solution to that same problem. You know, the, these kind of things are going to show up, you know, in auditions because casting, especially for these smaller characters, they just don't have that many options to choose from. And so they're going to take it right from the shooting draft of the script. And it often has directions that are impossible, you know, or unrealistic, you know, to do in an audition situation. Does that answer your question, Duke? Very much. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and that's 4.30 exactly. So uh, thanks for showing up today. Oh, I just confirmed uh, Rogi Yu for Thursday. So uh, Rogi uh, was going to come in as a guest a couple of weeks ago, and then he booked a role on uh, the new show Kung Fu that's uh, casting and shooting in Vancouver. So he's coming off of working on set. He's a very experienced actor in uh, theater and in film and TV. And I'll show you his resume tomorrow and then we'll talk to him on Thursday. Bye everyone.